Hey everyone, Repose here. Welcome to episode 14 of Double or Nothing, the series where I play Rogue solo, starting from level 1, and unable to use my stash or trade other players. Last episode, we spawned back in on the Coliseum map. At the start of the game, I baited a Ranger and Barb duo. Then I crept up on a wizard fighting a skeleton champion. And the game ended with this duo barely opening their escape portals in time as I hurled throwing knives their way. Please enjoy episode 14 of Double or Nothing. And we are back yet again. Finally level 20. It's been a long journey but we did make it without dying. But one thing we haven't gotten in a while is a nice upgrade. I still have my trusty green stiletto dagger. The perks are the same as last episode, poison weapon, stealth, ambush, rupture, backstab, and hide. We spawn in here, I'm already pretty happy because I know this isn't the Colosseum or the circular map. Which I was getting pretty sick of at this point in the playtest. But there has been some rumors that there's a one-handed crossbow that'll be added to the game next playtest, and I'm assuming rogues are going to be able to use that. And that would make that map a lot more playable, and that sounds really fun. But nothing has been confirmed yet, so we'll just have to see. But I did hear a footstep in the other room, so I kind of go invis here and creep out. Looks like a cleric and a barbarian. And luckily when I walked up here, the skeleton right in front of me didn't get summoned yet. So when the barbarian comes up, activates the skeleton. Which sets me up for a perfect backstab on the cleric, three hits. He goes down, now it's just the barb. Now the skeleton's mad at me here, so I'm gonna have to back up and hit some heals off before I fight this guy. Back up into this room. Drink one of my green tier health potions. And the 1v1s with the barbarians really aren't too bad, once you know what you're doing. Unless they have a million throwing axes, then it's unplayable. But, this guy's got his felling axe out. Chucking a few throwing knives at him here. The first one procced the rupture on him, so it did do a decent amount of damage. And this guy's going for the felling axe swing, so I pull out the rapier. One poke, two more, and he goes down. And if you're solo barbarian, I would not recommend using felling axe, or at least have a backup weapon, like a horseman's axe. Anyway, already I hear another set of footsteps coming in. This cleric's got his big hammer out. Might have to be a little bit scared of that guy. And it sounded like they were buff buffing up there maybe, or healing or something. You guys are ready for some action. They go over there, but it's a dead end, so then they come over here. I'm being very patient. They see the dead bodies and they start looting. And it's my time to strike. I take the wizard out. The cleric still doesn't even know what's going on. He gets hit twice, but he's still alive. That was a 2v1. Barbarian put his weapons away, so I almost went in with the dagger, but pulled him back out. And when this skeleton flanks them, they just start panicking and they get chopped out. And that's going to be a nice quick 5 kills for this game. I gotta loot these guys. They were pretty geared actually. This wizard's got a good pendant. I grabbed that. Looking back, I don't know if... I actually would have preferred my other pendant, I think, but this one's still really good, so it's fine. But I'm just going to speed up here while I loot everyone. And the cleric was really geared. That hammer was pretty good. But I think that weapon is kind of a meme. It's really hard to actually hit people with it. If you do though, it completely destroys them. And the sad thing about killing 5 people at the start of the game, although it's very fun, is that 
That's so much of the lobby cleared out that finding more people to fight is going to take a while. So I'm going to speed through here. I've been getting asked a lot, uh, why am I not dual wielding my rapier and the stiletto? Because if I had them in the same hand, then the rapier would benefit from the stiletto bonus damage. Because it has plus one damage and the stiletto would benefit from the rapier stats, but... One, I don't think it's worth losing the move speed, and two, it's not worth losing the pullout speed of the weapons. Because the best part of the stiletto, when it's solo, is you pull it out and you put it away, like, almost instantly. And it's really good for, usually when people start drinking potions and then I go in with the stiletto, that's kind of the ideal situation for that. But finally, I cruise over here and I see it looks like, I think that's a wizard getting chased by a fighter. So I'm thinking about going in on this guy. But right as I'm about to, I see a barbarian. It's team with the wizard. And I don't want to get sandwiched between them. I'm going to go up here on this cheeky little spot. If you didn't know about this, you can actually jump up ladders in this game. So I jump up here. And this is a very nefarious position to be in. At this point, this spot was pretty known though. And whenever I come into this room, I'll, not always, but a lot of times if I'm really aware, I'm always like looking up just to make sure no one's camping up here. Because I've, uh, I've gotten ambushed by a couple people up there before. But I heard the fighter run this way. It seemed like he was solo. Kind of running after him. I hear someone drink something. And the fighter thinks he's a rogue, but... He dies in two throwing knives, so he must have been really low. It was a nice try. If I didn't see him go invis there, maybe it would have worked out, but... I still heard him drink the potion, so probably not. Oh, now I'm gonna come back over here. There's still that other team. I know it was a wizard and a barbarian at least. And some down portal spawn over there. Keep that in mind. You're a fighter, so I sneak out and he's opening this portal. I let him open it and then I see he's walking away. I'm gonna run up here in a sec. Try to cut him off. I jump and that jump was really bad because I let him kind of just squirm around me right into the portal there so if i didn't jump i think i could have body blocked him maybe and perhaps got the kill but we will never know that guy was still fighting these other guys over here or at least toying with them with his crossbow out and i got a lot of portals in this room i throw a throwing knife through the door at that guy but it's starting to seem like they might have to push me here because there's so many portals in here. And there's one in that room. And at this point I was wishing I didn't open the portal next to me because I'm kind of locked in this spot if I want to fight these guys or else one of them could just run up behind me and steal it, which would not be good. I'm chilling here, trying to see what they'd want to do here. If I get in a bad spot, I could always just exit through that portal, so I might as well stick around for now, see if I can do anything. Just rearrange the inventory a little bit. And the final circle is now upon us. See this rogue opening this portal, so I hit him with the throwing knife with the rupture. His teammates run in to back him up. And I hear the wizard charging a fireball. I want to open the door, but he's just holding the fireball up. It was a pretty smart play. So the rogue leaves. It's just the barb and the wizard now. The final circle starts to close here. And at this point, I don't want to risk it. Maybe the barb will come to the door and steal the portal. So I just get out. The pretty decent six kills there. Not bad.
We're just going to come over here and sell everything. Make sure we have enough gold for another high roller entry. But yeah, that wraps it up. So if you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe. And thank you for watching episode 14 of Double or Nothing.